Hello parents and welcome to the Hubbard Country Club Junior Golf Program. It is indeed our pleasure to have your children, your junior gol golfers involved with our Junior Golf Program here at Hubbard Country Club. It is indeed our pleasure to have you helping us out with that. Uh, in my 18 years here working with the juniors of Hubbard Country Club, uh, the one thing that I know for certain is that the more parent involvement that we have in our program, the better our program is and the more your kids will get from it. So thank you uh, beforehand for your involvement in our program. Your input is always welcome. Uh, and, and again, thank you for helping us out. Uh, our goal with your juniors is, you know, in our mind to teach them the greatest game ever invented. Uh, a game that hopefully they can play for the rest of their lives. A game that, that they can play with not only their parents, but hopefully their children someday, and hopefully someday they'll be able to play with their grandchildren. Uh, it's a game that teaches a lot of life values simply just by learning how to play the game itself. And a lot of those values we, we find in the history and the etiquette of the game itself. So. Um, each Tuesday, in, in order to try to get some of the, the, the real-life golf experience to them, we have what's called our Junior Play Day, where we try to get the juniors on the golf course. And we certainly feel with our younger ones especially, we need a lot of parent involvement in that. Uh, to try to get them out on the golf course so that they're in a safe and learning environment, we need your help, and that is the purpose of this video today. Uh, we also recognize that uh, some of our parents don't have a whole lot of golf experience. We have a lot of parents out here that work with our Junior Golf Program that play golf every day and know a lot about golf, but we also have parents that have never played golf and are new to the game. And so sometimes those parents have, have told me in the past that they don't feel comfortable out there. Uh, for It's hard for them to communi communicate a lot of what we want them to learn out there if they don't know it themselves. So uh, what we're going to do today is hopefully bring you up to par. Uh, we're going to try to teach you some of the things that we think are important for the kids to learn on the golf course. And the way we're going to do it is kind of go step by step what we do here on Tuesday morning, really from the time you walk down the hill to the to the main circle to uh, start our junior golf day experience. Uh, from the time you leave, hopefully give you a step by step uh, analysis of the program so that you know what's going on and that when you're out there walking with your children and walking with a group of children, uh, that the children are safe and they're learning and so forth and so on. So uh, enjoy this video and if you have any questions, please feel free to call me at the golf shop anytime, 913-345-1011, or you can email me at leampga at sbcglobal.net. Thank you and enjoy. So what happens when your junior first arrives on Tuesday morning? Right now I'm standing in the cart staging area of Hallberg Country Club, which is located on the very south wind, southwest end of the pro shop here. And this is typically where we stage most of our carts for golfers when they go out and play. But on Tuesday mornings, we really stage the carts over to this side right here, and there are going to be about four tables right here. Uh, and behind each table, there is a little shepherd's hook with a sign attached to it. This one, this sign says four hole junior golf right here. But there's one for three holers, one for four holers, one for six holers, nine holers, eighteen holers, etc. Okay. So what we would ideally like to happen on Tuesday mornings, for example, is our, our four holers have a clinic at 8:30 and play at 9:30. Our three holers have a clinic at 9:45 and then they go out and play on the golf course at 10.45. Uh, ideally, so if you have a four-holer, they're going to show up here at maybe 8.15, 8.20, 8.25, a little bit ahead of time so that we can kind of get them prepared and get teaching you know, right at 8.30 so we have uh, more time for our clinic. They're going to come down to their respective table, which matches the sign, whether three-holer, four-holer, what have you, and uh, they're going to check in. And ideally, we like for the junior golfer to check themselves in. So they're going to walk up to the table and say, hi, my name is so-and-so, I'm here to play golf today, I'm checking in. At that table, we also have a sign-up for next week. And so if the junior golfer is going to play next week, we ask them to sign, sign their name down. That's where they may need a little help from the parent, uh, as the kids may, may or may not know their own schedule. So that we're going to ask them to, to, to check into our uh, parent walking coordinator. And then from there, if they store their clubs here, over to the very south of the building, over to my left right here, is where we have a kind of a, a lawn area, and that's where we stage all the junior golf clubs that are at least in our storage, so that after they check in, then they can go find their bag, and they come back and just wait right here. So if, if we have a three-holer, which we have a clinic at 945, again, the same kind of thing. We ask you to show up a little bit early, have the child check in, tell them their name, and go collect their bag. So at that point, we're going to take them to the back of the range where we're going to uh, do our clinic. Uh, and we have young men uh, that work here that are, are constantly uh, shuttling these junior golfers to the range. So we ask them to wait here for just a moment, moment until we can get them a ride to the back of the range. And we'll kind of call them one at a time, so-and-so, hop on the cart, you're ready to go, and we'll take them to the back of the range from, 
from that time. So four holers have a clinic at 8.30, they play at 9, 9.30. If you're a parent walk around that day, if you only have a four holer, you feel free to drop off your child at, at a, little, a few minutes early for the clinic. Uh, and then you have a free hour before you have to come back and, and help us walk. So we ask the parent walkers to kind of come back about 8.15 to check back in to the uh, parent walker coordinator and they will give you a sheet uh, of some instructions of, of some things we're trying to do that day. We may focus on a particular thing in etiquette like repairing greens, repairing ball marks and greens, or raking the bunker. Uh, so the, please read the information sheet and then there's a little score sheet for your junior golfer there as well. At that time, you, you're going to grab an empty cart that we have here, and you're going to take it to the very back of the range, which I'll show you where that is here in a few minutes. Um, and, and so likewise for the three-holers. They, they play at 1045. We ask the parent walkers to show back up a few minutes early, 1030, 1035, and uh, get the information sheet from the parent walker coordinator, take a cart, and head to the back of the range at that time. And then that's where I will meet you uh, with the junior golfers, and, and you'll have on this sheet uh, – all the juniors is going to play with you that day, and you meet me at the back of the range, and we'll go from there. Thank you. All right, so we're on the back of the range now, and so when we shuttle your uh, children to the golf clinic, this is where we're coming to the back of the range. We'll have a set up for them to have a, a clinic here. Now, if you look over here behind me, you'll see that there's a putting green. So oftentimes we're working on full swing, and we also work on short game and, and putting with your children as well. But near the conclusion of their one-hour golf clinic, we're going to gather all the kids up kind of halfway. There's a little uh, lot of open grass here between the edge of this driving range and the putting green there. We're going to gather the kids up. We're going to talk to them about something regarding etiquette, whatever our etiquette focus of the week, week is, whether it's uh, repairing a ball mark on the green, raking the bunker, picking up trash on the golf course, whatever that happens to be. We're going to go over here and talk to uh, your children about that. So when you come to pick your children up, you're going to pull your cart up in this circle that's over here. You may not be able to see it on the video, but it's over to the side here by the driving range. And at that time, you'll have the parent walker uh, coordinator will have given you a sheet. They'll have the names of who you're going to go out on the golf course with, the children and junior golfers you're going to go out on the golf course with. So at that time, you're going to hand that sheet to me, and I'm going to call those kids forward, and hopefully one at a time. I'm going to call those kids forward. I'm going to introduce you uh, if you don't know those children. And then uh, you're going to take them out to a certain hole. If you're a three-hole uh, junior uh, parent walker, uh, you're going to play the same hole from three different spots. And you'll see that when I uh, when this video takes you out on the course. Uh, so you'll stay on that that hole that I'll assign you. If you're a four-hole, you're going to play four different holes, either one, two, three, four. Or we also use holes uh, number eight, and nine sometimes. But I'm going to start you essentially. I'm going to tell you where to go to start with. So. And they say, hey, you're going to go play, uh, start on number eight, you're going to play eight, nine, one, and two. Uh, I may say you're going to start on hole number one, you'll play one, two, three, and four. And so, again, we're going to try to help you as best we can get your group of four junior golfers out there so we don't have to pile them all on one card. Uh, if we do, unfortunately, have a situation where we have to pile them all on one card, I'm going to uh, try to get as many kids within the seating area as possible, and we'll put the clubs on the back. So, again, that the, the kids are not hanging uh, off the back of the card uh, which they like to do because that's fun, but also I don't want anyone to get injured. So, so anyway, this is where you're going to come and pick them up. Uh, I'm going to call the kids to get them organized for you, and then we're going to send you out in the golf course uh, uh, with the children. And so the next part of this video, we're going to take you on the course, and you'll see exactly what we're doing out there. Thank you. All right, parents, now we are out on the golf course. We've taken the kids from the driving range out to their assigned uh, starting hole. Now, with both the three and four holers, the children are going to start from the yellow stakes that are placed out in the fairway. So uh, if you're going to, for number eight, for example, you're not going to start where the adult tee boxes are, but you're going to come out in the fairway and try to find out where the yellow stakes are. Uh, the three hole group, uh, you're going to play from the yellow stakes as well, you're going to stay on one hole. There'll be three sets of these yellow stakes out there. There'll be a short one, a middle set of yellow stakes, and a longer set of yellow stakes. So the kids are going to play the same hole for three different distances. And that way, with the little kids, the smallest, the three holers, they don't have you don't have to transport them from hole to hole. With the four-hole group, you can come out and find the set of yellow stakes. You're going to play the hole to its completion, and then on the, then you're going to take the kids and you're going to go to the next hole. And again, look for the the yellow stakes to to see where you're going to start. Now, 
Both crews will play to some degree a scramble. The three holers really almost throughout the entire season, with the exception of the junior club championship, the kids are going to play a scramble, which simply means that all of the kids will hit their initial shot. They will pick the best shot. Uh, so whoever had the best shot, they all pick up the balls and they go to that particular spot, and then they all hit a shot from there. And again, the same thing is repeated. Whoever hit the best shot, the other, the other children go get their balls, and they bring the ball to the best shot, and they, again, they all hit from there. Okay, and that is repeated all the way to the ball is hit into the hole. The four holers, ideally what we have in mind is that they play a scramble for two holes. They do that for two holes, and then they play their own golf ball for two holes. Now, the reason we play a scramble is what we find with little kids is that they're just simply not capable of playing their own ball uh, because they don't hit it good enough and consistent enough yet. Uh, that it won't take them three to four hours to, to play their ball. So oftentimes if they get up and they're playing their own ball and they're not advanced enough yet, it's hit a ball a few feet, hit a ball a few feet, hit a few, ball a few feet, and it just takes them forever to get to the hole, and it's not a very good time for them. So we use a scramble to try to help out the pace of play, get them done in a reasonable amount of time. Now, you know, as the year progresses, uh, I give the parent walkers um, some leeway with that. And what I mean is if you have a good group of three holders and four holders, uh, you, for the four holders, for example, you, if you have a real good group, you might want to let them play their own ball the whole time. If they can do that and they can keep up with the other groups on the course, uh, then we allow them to do that. Uh, so, you know, if you, if you look back and there's not a group or two that's sitting there waiting on you in, a, in an open hole in front of you and the, and the kids really want to play their own ball or compete, have, after, have at it. If they want to do one hole scramble, in three holes on their own ball, that's a fine way to do it too. Likewise, if you have a group that's just not quite as skilled as some of the other groups, and, and they try to play their own ball, but they're not succeeding, and it's taking them too long, and you have groups that are waiting on you, you might want at that point to uh, allow them to play a scramble the whole way through the entire four holes. It's up to you. Sometimes you can play a scramble to get to the green, and then from the green they can they can put their own ball into the hole. So we give you some discretion. Uh, to use on the golf course, we give you some guidelines, we give you some discretion uh, to, to help your kids essentially have fun. So you're kind of fighting a battle between how skilled they are, how long it's taking them, and trying to progress them. You know, ideally, as we go through the year, you'll see the kids get better as they go along, and they'll be more capable of playing their own ball uh, throughout the entire course. So, now, uh, you know, the biggest area of concern is safety for the kids. Okay, and there's essentially three ways to get hurt when you're playing golf. One is that you're going to get hit by the golf club. The second is you're going to get hit by the, the uh, golf ball. And the third is you're going to fall off that golf cart. Okay, so we're going to, we, we talked about that golf cart a little bit. We'll probably talk about it a little bit more. Um, so let's talk about safety as far as where the kids are standing. So ideally when, when we're teeing off, and, and let me take a step backwards real quick and talk about just general preparedness. Uh, you know, I really want all the kids as they play golf to have tees, and we'll talk to them about that. You know, the other thing they should have, and we we'll give them one of these in the rules and etiquette class, is a ball mark repair tool. So when you're starting, you'll find it a lot easier as a parent walker, uh, and you'll find yourself go a lot faster. If all the kids have tees, they all have a ball mark repair tool, which the little three and four holder kids probably won't use a whole lot or don't have a whole lot of reason to use because they don't hit the ball a long ways. And the other is that they have plenty of golf balls in their bag and they have one in their pocket. Okay, and they're, they're ready to go. And that's one of the things we're trying to get the kids. Hey, kids, let's get ready to go. Let's pay attention and, and, and play when it's your turn. Now, we don't encourage junior golfers to use range balls. Okay, these are the balls for the driving range. And we don't like the kids uh, taking the balls off the driving range. Okay, I have plenty of golf balls available uh, when you check in if the kids need their own golf balls. Okay, we want the kids to have their own golf balls. And if, if, if they start off the day, they don't have enough golf balls in their bag, then we have some extra golf balls that we have uh, that members bring in from the course that they find out there, they leave them on the cart or what have you. But there's always plenty of golf balls in by where the parent walker coordinators are that the kids are more than welcome to help themselves to so they don't steal golf balls uh, from our driving range. Now, so the kids are going to use a tee from, from where they start the hole, the, the yellow stakes. Okay. And you know, obviously as they swing, they're going to take up a certain amount of room as they swing. Uh, and we want to make sure that obviously all kids are far enough back away from that golfer that as, as the junior golfer is swinging, they're not going to get hit by this golf club. Okay? We definitely don't want anyone standing in front of the golfer. 
Okay. So not only is the club going to move that way, but so is that golf ball hopefully going to move somewhat forward too. So the, the place where we want the kiss handing is over to the side of the golfers, well away from them, but facing them so they can see where that ball is going to go. We don't want a, a junior golfer even the slightest bit in front of the golfer that's hitting because the ball can always almost go at a, at a dead 90 degree angle. So we really want the junior golf, golfers far enough away that they're not going to get hit by the golf club, behind them so they're not going to get hit by the golf ball. We also want them far enough away that they're not really a distraction to the person that's hitting the golf ball. You know, that's one of the things we'll learn in golf is we want to be quiet while the other golfer is hitting and be far enough away from them that you know, they don't see you in their peripheral vision. They don't see the shadows uh, that, that we get on the around the golf ball, too. So they want to be far enough away from them, uh, trying to be still and trying to be quiet. You know, the, the challenge is, and it's not as big a challenge when they're playing scramble as it is when they're playing their own ball, the challenge is once you, they all, all the golf, all the kids have hit from the uh, from the tee box. Ideally, we want them walking on their own. We don't want them riding in the cart. Okay, you are more than welcome to use a cart uh, when you're out there with them. Especially the four-hole parents who have to once the kid gets off the green, they have to drive the kids to the next hole. Okay, but we want the kids walking on their own as much as possible, uh, or really throughout the entire course, unless it's a brutally hot day or something like that. We'll give you some discretion. You're more than welcome to use the cart. If carts are off the path, you can bring them out in the fairways, not close to the greens, not close to the tees, but, but out in the fairways. But once the kids start moving then, uh, you know, the person in golf that's farthest away from the hole hits next. So if you have four kids that hit, and they all hit at different distances, the person that hit the shortest or is farthest away from the, the hole will hit next. What we find often with junior golfers is though is while this person's getting set up and ready to hit, one of the other junior golfers that hit, that's hit the ball farther will go up to their golf ball. We don't want that to happen because they're going to be, even though they may be off to the side quite a ways, we don't want them in front of that kid that's hitting the golf ball at all. Okay, because we don't want them to get hit by a golf ball. We don't want them to be a distraction to that golfer as well. So you always have to constantly remind the kids to pay attention to the fact that we don't want to walk in front of the person that's farthest away from the hole. We'll just slowly progress through the hole and take our time. We don't want to try to be darting up in front of the other kids where they're in danger. So again, you know, the main safety thing is we want the kids, the, the golfer that's hitting the golf ball to be aware of where the other kids are, the other junior golfers are, in reference to them and to their swinging club and to where their ball could possibly go. We're always reminding the kids about that. And then the kids that are watching the golfer hit, we want to remind them that we need to be being quiet, being still, and most importantly, we're watching the golfer hit, and we're in a position that we cannot get hit by the golf club and the golf ball. So we want them plenty far away uh, and behind where that golfer is hitting. And those are the most important things that we deal with when we deal with junior golfers, trying to keep them safe on the golf course, reminding them to pay attention to what's going on and their surroundings around them so that, so they're safe out here. So the next thing we're going to do is talk about bunker and greenside. Uh, but, you know, this is kind of the most important area of, of trying to keep these kids uh, safe out here. So thank you. All right, so we're still out here on the golf course. Two more types of discussion. We're going to talk about care of the golf course. We're going to talk about bonkers. And we're going to talk about the green. There's other, there are several other things that you deal with when you deal with care of the golf course. Uh, but they're, they're so plentiful that, we'll go, that we'll, we'll, we won't mention all of them. But the two big ones for me for junior golfers are the greens and uh, the bunkers. Now, before I do that, I, I want to mention one thing that I forgot to, to, to talk about earlier. Ideally, especially six and nine holders, they're walking the entire golf course. Okay, uh, you're more than welcome as a parent walker to take a cart, and sometimes it's, sometimes it's often very helpful to get the kids from one hole to the next hole. Uh, but ideally, even with the three holders and four holders, six holders, nine holders. They're walking the golf course themselves. You, you can use a cart and you can take it along with them. If carts are off the path, you can get the cart over in the fairway, not near the tee boxes, not near the greens, but you can get the cart in the fairway. But ideally, the, the junior golfers are walking the hole. And if you have a big gap from one green to the next tee box, you're more than welcome to, to, to take the kids on the cart safely and then tr transport them to the next hole. But during the hole, we want those kids uh, walking as much as possible. Okay? Now, we're going to talk about bunkers. Now, uh, this is a pretty traditional bunker. If you notice, it's got a high side near the green, a low side away from the green. 
Okay, we have both fairway bunkers and grease side bunkers here at Hover. Uh, but a couple things to note. Ideally, what ha happens when you hit a ball in a bunker, you're going to get in there and you're going to dig your feet around. You're going to hit the shot, and so you're going to disturb the, the levelness in the uh, the levelness of that sand. It's not going to look as pretty when you get down in your shot as it did before. And so, oftentimes, the next golfer, when they hit a shot in, if if the person before them hasn't taken care of or raked the bunker thoroughly, their ball may roll into a footprint or the 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 area that you've taken your shot out of, and so that's not really fair to the next golfer. And so one piece of etiquette that golfers always follow is that when you hit a ball into a bunker, you leave it nice when you leave. Now, every bunker has a, at least one rake near it, uh, or multiple rakes near it, but at least one. And what we try to do when we get in the bunker is always enter the bunker on the low side. So advise your go junior golfers to do that. We never want a junior golfer walking down that hill right there, because as they step down that embankment, it's really going to disperse a lot of sand that's very difficult to go and replace, okay? It takes a long time and kind of a skilled um, bunker raker to be able to do that. So we always want the junior golfer to enter the uh, sand pit or the sand trap, excuse me, on the low side, carry the rake in their hand. They're going to get in here and put the rake to the side of their ball. They'll walk in, and it's absolutely fine the junior golfer digs their feet in. That's what they're ideally supposed to do. Okay, they're going to hit their bunker shot. Yeah, I'm glad I hit a good one for the video. And now what we want them to do is we want them to walk out almost exactly the same way they walked in, or they're going to follow their footprints out. They're going to grab their rake. They're going to rake both back and forth, trying to do a good job of smoothing the, the, the bunker out, make it nice and smooth again. Fill any holes. Rake it both backwards and forward to level out that sand and walk out their footprints. You know, if the kid's in here walking, all around, they're going to spend an hour raking this bunker. So we want to make it real simple for them. In and out, take the bunker, take the rake, and put it just inside the bunker, right like that. So again, real simple, in and out on the low side. You know, cover up the footprints and, and walk in and out on the, on the same line so you're not spending all day raking the bunker. Now we're going to go to the green and we're going to talk about the things that all junior golfers should be aware of. Thank you. All right, so now we're on the green here at Hallberg Country Club. Uh, for those of you that don't play golf, the green, even though the entire golf course is hopefully green, the green is the area with the shortest mown grass. And it's also the most delicate grass. It's the grass that uh, it, 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 it could die very easily, for lack of better terminology here. Uh, and golfers, as part of good etiquette and part of care of the course, have to know that there are things that they can do uh, to help help the green out and help to maintain its, its good condition. Now, ideally, you know, when I put on the green, I want my ball to roll as smoothly as possible. There are things that golfers do that can cause that not to happen. Okay, for example, when we hit a shot into a green, it creates a dent in the green. Okay, if we hit, if we hit a ball in from any uh, decent distance away, so 30, 40 yards, you're probably gonna, you're probably going to create a little bit of a dent in the green. And so, when the ball creates a dent in the green, if my putt, if I'm hitting a putt and my putt rolls over that dent, that ball is going to uh, hit the dent either slow down or, or get kicked sideways. So that, that green would cons be considered not very good, very good condition. So we always want to repair, when a golfer hits a ball into a green, we always want to repair that ball mark. Okay. So a ball mark, like I said, is a small hole in the green. And it, I just created one. It's right here. That's not a great close-up, but essentially what I want to do, there's a little circular hole right here, a circular dent. I want to take my ball mark repair tool and go around the edges of it. So I'm probably like a quarter inch on the outside of the little crater that's created. I stick the tool into the ground and I push inward. Okay, and I do that four, five, six times. I go around all the way around the edge of it and push inward. And that will bring the grass in so there won't be a dent there anymore. And then I take my putter or my foot and I tap down to try to make that level again. So now this little dent here has been repaired and so if, if, if my ball or someone else's ball rolls over that dent, it should ideally roll smoothly. So not only is that good for care of the course, we find out in golf that when we leave dents unrepaired, they take a long time to repair themselves. This little area that I just repaired right there, you won't even notice it in a day or two. It'll be completely clean again. The grass will grow back better. If it's, if it's left for 24 hours, it's not repaired, 
you'll see a brown spot there, a little de a dead spot there for a period of a week to two weeks. So it's always something for the for the look and care of the golf course. We want to repair those ball marks. Now, secondly, with junior golfers, and we won't go into everything here. We're not going to talk about tending the pin and marking your ball because hopefully as golf professionals we'll cover some of that when we instruct them. But the other thing, especially with the younger kids, especially with the three and four holders, we still see it in the, in the older kids too, pick up your feet. Okay, we see a lot of scraping of the greens because we're wearing these spikes to keep our traction. At the same time, if we're dragging our feet like kids are prone to do, they can really kind of scar the greens. And so after you know, junior golf's over with, the members will come in on Tuesday and say, hey, the kids were right around the hole and they were scraping up the whole area. Uh, so it may, again, it makes that scrape, makes it difficult for them to roll the ball smooth to the hole. And then secondly, it just looks ugly and looks poor. So, you know, that's one of the things that in the history of our program, we still need to do a better job of is getting these kids, and that's hard, getting these kids to pick up their feet around the, around the green uh, without dragging their feet and scraping up the green, especially around the hole. Okay? And when they hit the ball into the hole, I will brag on myself real quick, that's the bunker shot I hit. When they hit the ball into the hole, which I just missed, okay, we don't want to go digging it out with the pin or with the, with the, uh, the golf club. We want to pick the ball out of the hole. Okay? So that pretty much concludes the six and nine hole group. When you get done, you want to turn your scorecards in because we try to keep uh, track of what the kids throughout the year shoot throughout the year to, to keep their progression. So if they play their own ball, six and nine holders play their own ball around the golf course, we want another score. We'll post it on a scoreboard. Uh, three and four holders, I still want the information to come in um, from the parent walker as, as, as opposed to what the group shot. But you're playing more scramble, so it's hard to keep track of the score there. Uh, if you have a, uh, one of your junior golfers that uh, exhibited poor behavior, great behavior, let me know that as well. If we have junior golfers that are, are, are certainly just out of place as far as being in the right hole group, uh, and they're way out of place and they're holding the group back, I want to know that information as well. So, and again, we'll, we'll try to handle that and we'll try to be receptive to all the issues we have during junior golf. But uh, this is kind of a, a little training so, so that you as a parent walker are more comfortable you're out here, you know what we're looking for, um, and hopefully this helps you uh, feel more comfortable on the golf course so that you know what you're doing and it gets the, the junior golf experience to be a little bit better. Thank you, and we'll see you out on Junior Play Days. So here we are finishing up this video. I can't believe I almost forgot the most important thing. So when, the, when your children get done playing golf, uh, if they're a six or nine holder, we like for them to hand in their scorecard to us. Like, like I said, we'll have a scoreboard. We put up their scores. Um, but then the best part, we get to come over on the patio and have uh, cookies and lemonade. So uh, make sure the junior junior golfers get a get a cookie and lemonade. They'll hang out for a while. They'll talk with their friends. They'll socialize, which is an important part about learning uh, the game of golf. Um, and, and have a little fun and relaxation when they get done. One more small thing. Uh, we do have a lightning detection, lightning detection system here at Hallbrook. <clears throat> so if at any point you're out there and you hear a large horn go off, uh, that's a sign that the conditions in the atmosphere are ripe for electricity to be coming to the ground. And so uh, as soon as that horn goes off, we ask all golfers and, and all parents, to, uh, let's get yourself in here. Uh, there's a possibility that uh, that kind of thing may clear, and then there's three short blasts with the horns. But for the most part, if we hear the lightning go off on a Tuesday morning, the, the lightning detection system go off on a Tuesday morning, with the time constraints we have, we're probably junior golf is over with. Uh, if the weather looks bad on Tuesday morning, uh, check your email before you come out because I will try to uh, email the, the entire group uh, about the plan for that morning. So uh, let's have a great summer. See you around.